Hey everybody, welcome back to the Jury Design course for Blender 4.2. In today's lesson, lesson number seven, we're gonna cover setting up your Blender environment so that you can do realistic renders. And rendering those images out, saving the images and sending them to your clients is one of the best tools that you can have to show them what their jewelry is going to look like at the end of the design. Okay, let's get going on this. This is going to be a quick tutorial on how to set up an environment. I'm really not going to go into a lot of great detail on why you need to do everything, but just follow along and you'll understand eventually what I mean by um, setting up your environment to do renders. For instance, as you can see here, I'm going to throw up a bunch of renders of jewelry images that I've done for my clients. And it's always a good idea whenever you decide to create a piece of jewelry for either your customer or maybe you do wholesale work like I do, and you'll be giving this to another jeweler to pass on to his customer. You want to be able to send them images of the models that you've created. You're not going to just send the model or do the work. In this business and jewelry design, I'll either do the complete design and send off the model for printing and casting, or I will do the complete design, print the model, and deliver it to somebody who's going to do the casting. And that's typically how it works in the design business in the jewelry industry. So just keep that in mind. However, Blender is not it's not easy in Blender to go ahead and set up your, your complete environment. So I, I want to take this time just to go through this and explain to you the years of experience that I've had and how I go about doing it relatively quickly. The first thing you're going to need to do is get yourself what's called an HDRI image, an image that has a lot of white in its background but has some detail to it. And by that I mean like a, an inside picture of a room that has like white walls and white area, but there's furniture around to add reflection to your models. Because in Blender, when you render a model, Blender contributes to the quality of that image by offering the reflection of its environment. So we have to set up an image to be used as the environmental image to reflect and give off a realistic look to our model. So let's get started with that. First thing you're gonna to have to do is open up your web browser and you're gonna to go to a site called Pixabay. Now Pixabay is a free image site and you can either join, you can log in if you have like a Facebook account, you can just log in with your Facebook account. Um, I, am, I'm a, I, I do have a Facebook login that I use for Pixabay and I don't take a lot of images from, from this site but they do have some really good quality images to use. Now, when you open up this website, here's the search bar. We're gonna come over here and we're gonna type in uh, image of inside a home. And I'm just gonna do that as a reference. I'm gonna do press enter and do a search. And let's see what it comes up with. So now this first line will be uh, from iStock and these are paid photos. And then we can see royalty free images right here. And then everything down along this will be basically royalty free that you can use for your own purposes. Now, I like to use high definition images. And for instance, I'm gonna take this image here because this looks like it has a little bit of color to it with the browns in it. And we have a white environment or very light environment. This actual image might work a little bit better. Um, I'm, I'm thinking because it's a little whiter a little brighter, it'll give us a little bit more of a good quality rendering. So let's go to this one here, this furniture bedroom. I'm gonna click on it, and you can see a much larger image of that picture. And I'm gonna come over to download. When I hit download, it's gonna ask me the resolution that I want to download. And I'm gonna pick this one here, 1920 by 1270. And, you know, 1920 by 1080 is good, but anything over that is even better. So if you wanted a higher quality reflection in your model, you could actually go to like a 4K image. We're going to stick with a 1K image, and I'm going to hit download. And for the purposes of this, I'm actually just going to put it in my Lesson 7 folder. And I'll put that there. And it's called Furniture 305, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we've got that file saved. I want you to go ahead and do the same thing. Once you're done with that, we can close up our web browser. We don't need that anymore. And now we're back in Blender with our new file opened. So we haven't made any changes here. And if you want to, you can go to File, New, General, just to make sure that you've got a blank slate to work with. Now, to set up my environment, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and click on my cube. So I've got my cube selected. I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to, do, I'm going to add in a UV sphere. So I'm going to come over Shift-A. And I'm going to go to the Add menu, Mesh, 
and then I'm going to come down to UV sphere. Now, if you don't hit Shift A, you can come over here to the Add menu and do the exact same thing. Once that's done, I'm, I'm going to right click on this. And while I'm in object mode, if I right click on this, I bring up the object mode properties. And I'm going to ask Blender to shade this auto smooth. And you can see now my model has kind of got a nice smooth globe shape to it. Okay, so let's go and just make a, uh, we want to give this some color because we want it to look like something. And I'm going to pretend I'm going to add in a gold texture to it. And bygone, or, this is not going to be a tutorial how to make uh, textures for your models, but uh, we're going to cover that in the next lesson. Right now, I'm just going to go create a simple new material that I can call gold, and I'll give it a kind of a yellow metal appearance to it. Okay, so I've got that done. The material on this is now gold, but you can't see it because we don't have a rendering environment. So if I come over to our shaders here, and I select this viewport shading, and this is material preview, it should give me kind of an image with a yellow hue to it. You can see because I don't have an environment set up, it's not going to give me anything. So I'll come over to rendered view and see what that looks like. And again, we don't have an environment set up, so we can't see anything in our rendering. So the purpose of setting up our render environment is to give us a realistic view. Now, let's get on to that subject because this is the most important part. Over here on the right hand side, you can see all these little options. These are all our properties, uh, object properties down below and Blender render properties here. What I'm going to do is come over to this first tab and I'm going to change this to Cycles. Now Cycles is a much more realistic render engine than it is Eevee. Eevee comes by default. And I am going to hit GPU because I wanted to use my graphics card to process the image rendering. Under sampling, very important here, you don't need 1,024 samples when you're working in Blender. So I'm going to change this to eight samples for my viewport. And I'm going to click on denoise. I will explain to these, uh, denoising basically just takes all the little pixelation that's in the image and clears it up, makes it look more photorealistic. For our render settings, we're going to change this 4096, which, you know, that's great for, you know, high quality images if you're doing that, but we don't do that. So I'm going to change this to 40 and I'm going to set that just the way it is. And from there, all the other things here are going to be left alone. We will change one down here in a little bit, but right now I just want you to get set up here. So I've changed my render settings within Blender and how it works. What I'm going to do now is just come over to File. I'm going to come down to Defaults and save my default file like we did in this setup. I'm going to overwrite that and now every time I open up Blender, it's going to come up with these, these settings here for Cycles rendering. Our viewport when we're working in rendered mode will only be rendered eight times and our maximum picture or image rendering will be done by 40 times. I'll explain that to you in a little bit. Now, remember that image that we downloaded. Um, that image sets up our environment. So the environment needs to have lighting. So we can either add lights to our scene or we can create a, an image or use an image to light up our scene. And again, using the high definition image is much better than using just basic lighting. So I'm going to come over to this world settings option here, this little globe with a red outline on it. And here you can see we have preview. And of course, there's no environment settings here just yet. So we're not getting anything. Hence why we get nothing under our rendered or material preview. So let's come over here where it says background. We're going to leave that alone. Under color, we're going to hit this little arrow, this little circle here. And I'm going to come over to the textures column and I'm going to come down to environmental texture. Now it's going to change everything to pink. So that's okay because we haven't set up a file. We have to tell Blender, and I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. We have to tell Blender that we want to use that image that we downloaded. So I'm going to hit open and I'm going to come down or I'm going to move on over to where my folder is. So once I've gotten into here, I've got my image that we downloaded. This is our furniture scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that and I'm going to double click this and it's going to bring it into our environment. It sets up pretty much everything that we need for our environmental settings for rendering. So now, theoretically, if I come over to rendered view, I should have something that works. And you can see this is not quite right. And this image just didn't work. I wanted to show you that because for some of these images that you download are not going to work. 
Let's go take a look at another one that I downloaded from Pixabay and let's load that one and see if it works better. And here you can see it's still not working right, so I'm gonna go grab another one until I get one that I like. Okay, so I found a nice HDR image that works good and I do behoove you to go on Google or Bing or wherever you go to search for stuff and go find yourself a really nice HDRI image to use. Now you can see when I come into rendered viewed, my model looks relatively golden and I've got my environment set up with that image. So now you can see that if I zoom out here, I do have some shadows here and that is working on our environment to reflect on our gold ball that you can see when I zoom in, you can see some reflection there. I can also adjust these settings here by coming over to this down, drop down box and I can hit object, random, theme, combined, world scene. I can change everything I want. Now I like to turn scene lights on and scene world off and then I leave the reflections just like so. So again, we hit this little drop down box. We're gonna hit theme, turn on screen lights, turn off scene world, and you're gonna get this little circle here with an image on it. And that's the, this is the object that we wanna use. It's the third one from the left. You can change this and you can see it'll change a little bit of the model. So whatever one you actually like is the one you should use. Now I've got a good render set up and if I go into uh, material mode here, um, sometimes you'll get material mode working. I don't know, Blender 4.2 is giving me a hard time with that. Um, let's just see if I can get this to come over here. Scene lights, scene world. Yeah, it's just not working right. So don't worry about material mode. We'll cover, we'll try to fix it later in a different video. But for rendered view, we can see that our gold ball now looks like it's a gold ball. And if we come back to our modeling view or our solid mode, you can see we're working just like we did before. With those settings all in place, if you want to, you can leave the, the UV sphere here and you can come over and go to file, uh, come down to defaults and then hit save startup file and then overwrite your settings. Now, every time I open up Blender 4.2, I will be loading up with these render settings within my default file. Now, the purpose of that is because when I want to render out a view, for instance, I bring my camera into place and let's just go over to, when you come into view here, you're gonna change this to be, to turn on your camera for local rendering. And you're also gonna hit this little checkbox right here, lock camera to view. What that does is it allows you to zoom in and out just like so. I can move my model around in the viewport and see where my object's gonna fall within my render window. And when I go to render this, and I'm just gonna show you before we make another change here, when I render this whole image, you can see it renders out our gold ball with our background, and you can see the background image. Now it's done rendering, and that's a view of our model. So I'm gonna close this up. We don't need to have that render view there. Now we're gonna come over and turn off our camera view. To turn on and off your camera view, you press zero on your keypad, just like so. And if you don't have a keypad, you'll have to go and uh, do view, view render image. Uh, you wanna to go to viewpoint camera, and it'll bring it up. So that's view mode, viewpoint camera, okay? and then you can turn that off by toggling it. Now, when we've done that and we've got our default files all set, you notice that when we rendered that, it had the image of our texture image for our background rendering out with the gold bead. We don't want that in our profession. What we want is a, is a blank canvas. We want no background whatsoever. We only want the rendering to show our model. So to change that setting, we're gonna come back over to our render settings where we had our setup here and I'm going to move this over so it's a little bit bigger and scroll down this is where we changed our maximum samples on our render and our viewport we're going to scroll down until we get to film you're going to open up the little film tab by hitting that little arrow and then see there's a little box here called transparent you're going to click on that it's going to make it transparent so that it only renders the image of your model with no background, but the background is still used for rendering the quality of the image. With that checked, you're gonna come over here to file. Again, we're gonna come down to defaults, save startup file, and then overwrite it. 
Now, every time you open up or go to File New, our Blender version should have all of these settings already set up for you and you're ready to go for rendering. Now, we're not there yet, but I want you to set this up because it's going to help you to visualize the products that you make as we move forward in the course. I hope that helps, guys. That is how we set up our render environment. In Lesson 8, we're going to be covering how to set up a library file for our precious metals and diamond materials so that we can actually assign like yellow gold, white gold, sterling silver, diamond materials to objects and then generate a realistic view. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.